We're talking about Aptos, yeah. which had its launch in October to some fanfare and then some disappointment when the token launch went a little sideways. And now there's some pushback on the tokenomics of the project. For those who are interested, tokenomics generally refers to how the tokens are distributed from a new project that is launching. Bitcoin famously launched with a fair launch where anyone could mine if they knew about it from the very beginning. Of course, not a lot of people were paying attention to this in 2009, so not a lot of people participated. But at the very least, for sake of argument, you could say it was a fair launch. Ever since then, a lot of people have been working on how to launch a coin fairly. How do we engineer the token supply and the distribution of that token to make it as fair for everyone as possible? And Aptos, which is the new kid on the block coming to a bear market, has gotten some pushback. Aptos is a move-based chain, supposed to be pretty robust, supposed to be pretty scalable. And it comes from the people who are formerly working on Meta's blockchain DM. They moved over to this free project, Aptos, and they've allocated quite a bit of tokens towards themselves. The comparison here, of course, is Ethereum. Ethereum, the most important chain besides Bitcoin, and some people might even say it's flipped at this point. And the argument is that the Ethereum co-founders, they allocated 10% to the foundation, 10% to themselves, and then the rest went into an auction and a lottery and mining rewards. Aptos didn't do that. They distributed about 50% of rewards to themselves. Uh, Sam, I'm going to throw the story over to you, though, to get a little bit more granular with the details. Definitely an interesting story for blockchain nerds out there who are considerate of the tokenomics. Yeah, I, I think for me, the big takeaway from this story is that investors' tolerance for, um, or I, well, there, there's the investor side and then there's the consumer side, there's the developer side. Backing away from what I was about to say, one interesting thing here is I know all of us who are talking on the show today are um, pretty big uh, consumers of crypto Twitter. One thing that I've noticed about Aptos um, compared to other chains, and this is not based on data, this is just based on what I have observed, people do not give Aptos the same benefit of the doubt as they do other chains. And also Aptos does not, in my reading, seem to have the sort of community rallying behind it that other highly critical ecosystems ha um, or highly criticized ecosystems have had, e.g. Terra. Even when Hera was getting, you know, bashed for being a rigged system, a broken system, what have you, it had its fans. Aptos hasn't had that. And so I think the reason why this story is more interesting than some of these other, you know, weird fair launch, token launch stories is that in the absence of this community behind it, all we're really left with in terms of the, who would be fans of something like this are the developers um, and more, more to the point, the investors who ended up getting these funds. And that, that kind of has left me with a question, which is if the product of this or if the, 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 the profit of this is uh, at least so far only going to investors, if the optics are only for investors, What's the point? What is their go-to-market strategy? Who are they trying to persuade to do anything? I, I, it just seems to me like a, a PR nightmare. I don't understand how they're supposed to move forward with something yeah, like this. Yeah, I, I have to get on that because it's such an important point. And, and to, to make really clear, the reason that they, I would argue, the reason that they don't have the community, that they don't have the benefit of the doubt, is the, the, the legacy of where this technology comes from, right? It came out of Facebook's Libra, uh, one of the most misguided projects in recent memory, only recently supplanted by Metaverse, um, Facebook's version of the Metaverse. Um, and, and, you know, I just, they, they don't deserve the benefit of the doubt because the entire play is driven by money. They had this thing, they were like, oh, DM failed. I guess we can spin it off on the reputation that we were once affiliated with Facebook and we can make some money. And you have to look at that huge initial allocation in light of it's about making money. Although, frankly, it seems like that's totally crashing and burning because a one billion market cap for a new layer one, even in a bear market for crypto in 2022 is pathetic. I mean, it's an embarrassment and, and people have seen that this is not a good play. Um, the other really important point that this brings up is there are serious people are talking about crypto regulation. This is low hanging fruit. We need accounting rules that prevent companies from counting assets that they themselves have created against their balance sheets. We saw it with Celsius. We discussed it yesterday with SBF and FTX and Alameda. This continues to be a serious point of weakness because I don't, I'm not intimately familiar, but I assume 
that there is both a an Aptos token and some kind of private um, organization that actually has equity investors. And having those two things happening at the same time, it just does not work. It does not make sense. It leaves all kinds of avenues for manipulation. Um, and uh, it's it's bad. This is a law that needs to go into place. You should not be able to have your own token on your balance sheet, period. Will, I saw you get in there. Yeah, I'm going to actually riff on both the points you just made. Start with the first one, the accounting rules. That was some huge information coming from the Coindesk team talking about how FTX is using its own native token to balance its sheet. It's basically equity in itself, but it's a token, right? And that token trades on secondary markets. There's a lot of problems with it. They owned a lot of their own float for the token. There's a ton of problems with the fact that if that is the case and that's what's out there, and to my knowledge, FTX and Alameda has not distanced itself from the reporting at all, that really is a bombshell article on account of the equity that they have and account of the moves that they made over the summer. The fact that they were uh, pitching themselves as like the savior of decentralized finance, the savior of all these teams out there. And yet on the back end, a lot of the money didn't quite make sense. And to your point about regulations and laws, I think this is also on the lenders, right? If someone's going to give you money and you're lending against a floating token like that, And that's really on the lenders for not understanding what's happening. And we've seen that a lot, especially in the spring, where a lot of these firms were lending to Three Arrows Capital and other firms based on multiple parts of collateral that a lot of people had their hands on. Uh, So yes, David, I think think you are totally right there. We need some sort of like accounting rules or regulations that everyone agrees by. They're not going to double count their own native token. On to the second point about like launching L1 during a bear market really tough to do that. And I think you're spot on. Like no one really wants to give money to the Facebook team. I'm sorry that they're not exactly like beloved within the crypto community. When this was first launched, if you remember, it's called WorldCoin for a little bit. And there was a lot of anger and frustration that Facebook was moving into this arena and that spilled out all over Capitol Hill. We saw Mark Zuckerberg testify a lot of frustration there, a lot of frustration in the crypto community that Facebook was coming in. And now they've launched their own project. They might be moving away from Facebook and doing their own thing. But at the same time, they're using the same technology. It's the same people. And now we have this question about the allocation of the initial tokens, and it just smells bad. And the last point about it is like, is there uh, sorry, a market Will, to launch an one right now? Go ahead. Well, before you move on, I need to correct. I think you misspoke. Yes. WorldCoin is a totally separate bad idea. Uh, I think you're talking about uh, Libra or DM. The orb. Yeah. Was oh, what yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Was. Well, there was a initial name for Libra that was before uh, oh, the name before DM the other came three out. names for it. Okay. Yeah, there was like three <laughs> names. You might be correct. The the orb one was also pretty infamous. But yeah, the there was, was it was Sam like Worldcoin or Worldcoin or something like that. Yeah. That name. Yeah. But I'll kick it over to anyway, Sam. Sorry, I think continue. you nailed it with those two points though, David. Yeah, um, just a. Um, sorry, are, are we switching to to our next um, topic here, um, or or to, so. to keep on with this? No, I was kicking it over to you just to wrap up the oh. segment. Any final thoughts before we go to I break? I will. Uh, so I, I did have one more point. So I'm glad. I'm glad we're we're, we're still talking about this. The the other piece of this whole Aptos move Facebook thing is that Aptos is not the only Facebook originated company using Facebook's move language to launch a new L1 right now. There's another company um, or another chain called Sui that's that's doing the same thing. And one interesting thing to to note here, and and I I wanna write about this, is that Aptos is kind of the, at least in the the public um, view um, or sentiment, it seems to be kind of like the the, the more VC chain or at least like the chain that was run by, um, you know, the product managers and all of that from, from, from Facebook. Whereas Sui is, from the community, you know, at least what developers tell me, it's viewed as more like the dev chain, like developers of Libra, DM, of the move language are the ones who are working on that. So they both have different kind of go-to-market strategies. Sui seems to be taking a little bit more of a bottom-up approach, but I've heard rumors that they're, they've already raised a ton of money, not quite as much, um, but I've heard rumors that they might have raised even more. Like that's going to be a really interesting battle to watch. Developers do like this move language for various different reasons that are not for this show. Um, So they're going to duke it out for a while. One of them might win. They both might lose, but whether or not either don't have goodwill, I, I, I don't, I don't know. 